Hello and welcome to another edition of Mormon Stories Podcast. I'm your host, John DeLynn. It is uh, November 16th, 2016. Um, my name is John DeLynn, and I'm super excited to have you with us today for a very interesting and fascinating and special interview. I say that every time, and I mean it every single time. Uh, today I have with me Jesse Stay. Hey Jesse, welcome. Good. Well, I'm well, glad to be here. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jesse's super cool for a number of reasons, but the main reason we're interviewing him is because uh, Jesse uh, worked with and for the LDS Church uh, and its affiliates for a number of years, uh, sort of leading up their social media initiatives, including Facebook and Twitter and those sorts of things. Uh, it's, he's got a really fascinating insider's view on how uh, the LDS Church sort of entered into uh, the modern age in terms of social media, working with uh, PR and uh, various departments within the church on how to figure out um, how to uh, deal with things like the Joseph Smith Papers Project with uh, general authorities and their own personal social media accounts. Uh, with the I'm a Mormon campaign, lots of different projects Jesse worked directly on. Um, and uh, so we're really excited uh, to talk to Jesse about that. We're also going to talk to Jesse about his own uh, faith journey, about uh, uh, you know how his testimony has evolved over time and his relationship to the church and sort of what contributed to that. Um, and uh, and we'll just sort of have a great story and, and learn from a, from a dear person. So I'm really excited. Uh, Jesse, I, I thought it would make sense to begin by, by just sort of explicitly stating uh, your intention. Sure. Uh, there's going to be a lot of people that want the dirt here. There's going to be a, one, a, lot, a lot of people that want uh, the church to be thrashed and, and battered about. Um, sure. And uh, my sense is that's not what your intention is. So why yeah. don't you just spend a second to talk about why you wanted to come on Mormon Stories and talk, what you are trying to do, and maybe what you're not trying to do. Yeah, so I, I mean, for one, I, I've, I've, I've gotten a lot of pressure from various people that wanting me to, to do something, and I, I kind of did feel a little bit of a need to, to address that and to respond, but uh, I, I really have two main intentions. Uh, the first is, is I get a lot of people asking me my story. I get people that uh, um, I, that that want to know why I left. Both uh, members, family members, ex Mormons, uh, current uh, Mormons, and they want me to tell my story. And I, I even posted this on Facebook that I was going to be doing a, a major podcast uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, and asking people to share what they want. And there was a lot of curiosity on things that people wanted to know about uh, why I would leave the church after working for the church for three years, being a lifelong member. My grandpa was was practically a general authority uh, um, uh, and uh, uh, and 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 I've got a lot of a lot of background behind me that involved mostly the church so I want to tell my story of kind of why I chose to left, leave um, why I chose to uh, to go uh, but my second intention is is I do think um, and there's there's two sides to this um, amongst the Mormon community there's a lot of um, uh, misattributed uh, and wrong um, perceptions of those in the ex-Mormon community, uh, and I want to uh, I want to kind of show some of uh, some of that and why uh, uh, in in how someone that was once many of these people's friend, uh, uh, why I would leave, and that I, I hope they can see that I had good intentions and good reasons in, in doing that, and that, that this is just one story of many many other ex-Mormons. Uh, and there's a process we go through. Sometimes we are angry, sometimes we are bitter, but it's because of, it's part of that process that we're going through. I'm hoping I can show some of that. At the same time, I think amongst ex-Mormons, there is some um, uh, misperception of, of Mormons as well uh, and how the church works and how the, the church office building works. There, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna deny there are things that the church has done and is doing that I disagree with and I think is wrong. But at the same time, there are, I, I saw a lot of good intentions while working there and a lot of people that are truly trying to make the world a better place. So I, I think there's, there's a little bit on both sides and I, I, I kind of want us all to meet in the middle and have a group hug and, and, <laughs> and, uh, and, and get to know each other a little better. Beautiful. As, as you work in the high tech industry and with 
um, various clients around social media. Uh, and, and as you're an employee of the church, I imagine there are even legal sensitivities, but also professional sensitivities when you do an interview like this. Talk a little bit about what those sensitivities Certainly. are and how you're going to try and navigate those waters. Certainly. So, so uh, I, I mean, I... I I certainly don't want to reveal any, any uh, or divulge any secrets or, or 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 confidential information. That I worked for, I worked for a company. I worked for a business. I worked for a company. And like any company that uh, anyone has worked for, uh, you have a legal responsibility to maintain confidentiality of the things that you work there. So, my intention, and and I'm going to try my hardest to 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 keep that confidentiality throughout this. Uh, um, I, at the, at, and, and at the same time, I have respect for people that still work there. I don't want to betray anyone that is currently working there. So I, I'm going to try and do my best to, to, to stay a little broad on, on some things while working for the, while working for the church. I'm going to approach it in many ways. Um, I have a little bit of a different perspective now and a, a little bit of a different bias now than I used to. Uh, but I'm going to try and approach it in many ways to how I would have done it if I were interviewed by you when I was working for the church. And, and, and we'll, we'll see how far we can go with that and see what we can do. But I, I really want to respect uh, 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 my employment at the church and respect uh, I, I, I want just like any job I've ever had I if I if it was confidential I, I'm not going to reveal it but mostly out of principle but there are legalities around that too beautiful okay um, so uh, let's what I'll just say to listeners is that this will probably be a two-part interview uh, the first part of the interview will be uh, Jesse talking about his background in the church um, his ancestry, his experiences in the church uh, prior to working for the church. Uh, and then the second half of the first part will be him talking about what uh, led to uh, changes of belief and then participation in the church. And that'll end part one. Uh, part two will we'll actually dedicate to discussing his time at the church as an employee and what his experiences were. Uh, how does that sound? That sounds great to me. All right. So let's start. Uh, talk a little bit about, you have a really interesting uh, heritage in terms of mm -hmm. some of your ancestors and, and their role in the church. Sure. Uh, so let's start there and then move into your, your life in the church. Sure. Sounds good. So um, I am a descendant of Orson Pratt, as well as Heber C. Kimball, as well as one of Joseph Smith's wives. Uh, um, it was a, a loose... A loose uh, what was her name? Lucinda. Uh, <laughs> I got it written down, but uh, I, I, um, Lucinda. Oh, what was her name? Uh, Lucinda Kimball. Um, she she remarried. She was polyandrous with Joseph Smith. Uh, uh, her originally her original husband didn't know about uh, um, uh, about the marriage, and uh, and as, as far as we know, and uh, um, and. We don't know much about the time with Joseph Smith, other than she she was married with uh, married to Joseph Smith. Uh, after Joseph Smith died, um, Heber C. Kimball uh, um, married her and and took her out west. And her husband wouldn't. Uh, I, I think it happened where her husband originally uh, was unwilling to go out west with the saints, and as a result, uh, Heber C. Kimball uh, um, betrothed her and uh, and. Uh, is that the right word? <laughs> anyway, but they they married and, and were sealed and uh, um, and uh, and she went out west with Heber C. Kimball and her husband actually went out chasing them at uh, winter uh, at, at winter quarters at the time uh, and uh, and I think that's when he actually found out <laughs> about her getting married to another man. But uh, um, uh, lots of crazy stories around that. But uh, my my family history is church history. Um, uh, Orson Pratt's entire story, uh, whether true or not, around Sarah Pratt um, uh, uh, supposedly um, uh, uh, the first time Orson Pratt left the church was because supposedly Joseph Smith had made a uh, pass at Sarah, his wife, and uh, um, and uh, and Orson found out and uh, and ended up leaving. That's a long story short, and uh, they're 
debated uh, versions of the story around that. But now, is this family lore that you learned growing up in the church? It's family lore that I learned growing up in the church, and uh, um, and there's a lot more details out there if you search for it. I am not the biggest expert on history. I can't tell you every detail of history. That's you fine. Got, you talk to my you talk to my wife who is a, a history major. She'll do it. And she's going to kill me for saying that, but uh, <laughs> but she's smart on that. And um, I am not a a uh, that's fine. Um, uh, um, a history expert by any means, but that's the folklore. Uh, Heber C. Kimball, of course, settled majority of Salt Lake City. Uh, he owned majority of the land down <laughs> downtown for quite some time. His gravesite is still out there, uh, um, uh, and uh, um, and then Orson Pratt uh, settled St. George uh, when they got out here. But Orson Pratt ended up becoming a a, a, a a champion for uh, uh, for polygamy after he came back, and uh, both of them multiple multiple wives, and uh, um, I, the the extended family reunions usually have some polygamous family that attends the the, the family reunions. So so uh, a long family history, uh, church history background with that, and and then my other side goes to other pioneers that uh, aren't quite as famous, but also had various. Uh, parts in Doctrine and Covenants and other things, so. So significant Mormon credibility. You, yeah. You I, score well on the Mormon cred I, scale. So. You, you, I, I, the first tw 12 apostles, I think, uh, gets up there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if there were royalty, I guess I'd be a, a descendant of royalty. <laughs> so talk a bit about your grandpa. Sure, yeah, so a lot of people know my name from my grandpa. I was named after my grandfather. Um, what was his name? His name was Jesse Stay. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, he was, um, uh, he was the, uh, uh, he led um, BYU Motion Picture, Picture Studios from the late 70s, early 80s. He succeeded Judge Whitaker, uh, Wetzel Whitaker, who, uh, um, who started BYU Motion Picture Studios. My grandpa was over the films like The Mailbox, The Telephone Call. He was over the, um, uh, Mr. Kruger's Mr. Christmas. Christmas. Yeah. Uh, um, and, and it was a, a big time in church media publication at the time uh, when uh, the church was really starting to get out there in terms of, of media. And uh, uh, he made a lot of progress with that. And there were varying politics uh, uh, that, that caused him to leave. Uh, um, a lot of it was very similar to what I saw when I worked for the church and that uh, uh, multiple departments ended up doing the same things he was doing. And <laughs> he didn't see the need to <laughs> stick around after that from, from, from my understanding. Um, uh, but uh, um, great man, very. I, I I I still look up to him so much. I, I'm honored to have his name. Uh, he was um, uh, he was a colonel in the Air Force. Um, uh, he uh, um, he's featured in the book Unbroken by uh, uh, um, uh, by Laura um, Hildebrandt, whatever her name is, um, and. Uh, um, uh, he was in Louis Zamperini's squadron uh, during World War II. They flew B-24s uh, across the Pacific. Um, uh, Lou, uh, he was he participated uh, par partially in the uh, rescue squadron for Louis. Um, uh, and of the of the like twelve or so people that were in their squadron at the beginning of the war, only four people survived. Um, two of those were Louis uh, Zamperini and Philip. Um, I always forget his last name, who was with Louis in the book. Uh, and uh, and then my grandfather was the third, and the fourth went home with uh, I think tuberculosis. So uh, uh, he was lucky to be alive. An excellent, amazing pilot uh, in the war. Uh, um, and uh, he came back. Um, uh, uh, did some stuff uh, with the uh, with the military after that. He uh, he led public affairs. Um, uh, he was one of the leaders of public affairs over um, the uh, Dugway uh, sheep incident uh, for the Air Force. Uh, he was the one that convinced the Air Force to uh, uh, to at least admit uh, they never really admitted, but at least um, uh, research into what the cause of uh, of the sheep dying out at Dugway randomly. Uh, 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 were and and as a result, I think a lot of those farmers got reimbursed uh, from that. I believe, if I remember the story right, um, uh, he uh, um, he was in charge of the um, 
uh, it, while doing the same role, he uh, they they did a lot of invest. And this was at the Pentagon. They they did a lot of investigation into. Uh, uh, there was a whole Air Force UFO task force at the time, and uh, they would go and investigate every single UFO uh, incident. And uh, um, he was he he made the announcement that the um, or he was part of the announcement that uh, that they ended that task force. Uh, they were going to end that task force, and he said to his dying breath that uh, every single incident that they investigated had some sort of uh, uh, credible uh, explanation to it, that there were no evidence of, of UFOs and everything they did. Um, he ended up, um, I, 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 I'm, my timeline's a little off, but he ended up um, uh, with um, uh, being uh, asked to uh, lead uh, and start BYU's ROTC program. Um, uh, he was the first colonel. I think that's when he became a colonel, I believe. Um, uh, he was the first colonel over uh, uh, BYU's ROTC program. Um, uh, multiple callings in the church. He was, um, he was a, a bishop, stake president, mission president. He, uh, um, he was a regional representative over the Los Angeles area. He was, uh, um, uh, he was in the uh, Los Angeles temple presidency. He was a sealer in the temple. He had his second anointing. Uh, he, uh, um, I don't know much about that, but uh, um, he, uh, um, he was in the on the general Sunday school board with uh, Elder Nelson, and uh, when Elder Nelson was the Sunday school president before he became an apostle, and uh, um, he had nothing but fond feelings for Elder Nelson. And and I talked to Elder Nelson briefly once, and Elder Nelson said the same thing about my grandfather, which which was kind of fun. I love I love my grandfather. Um, he was, um, uh, uh, I think that's, I think I covered the majority of it, but, uh, just, uh, I, I mean, both in and out of the church, uh, he was seen as a great man and I still see him as a great man to this day. I, I, he's one of my, my life heroes. So is it, is it fair to say that maybe when you eventually went to work for the church, you were inspired by him as sort of a model so, for that? Yeah, I often wished when I worked for the church, I, I often wished that, uh, that I had him to rely on. He had died a couple of years before I started working for the church. And uh, um, I, I would have loved to share and swap stories with him because um, I did some research when I worked for the church. And, and there were people that had worked with him that were still working for the church um, when I was there. I, and, and I'd asked a few people about him I, I talked to family members about um, about his experiences and and it, it sounds like he came across a lot of the same politics that I came across while working for the church he came across a lot of the uh, um, the same um, same bureaucracy that I that I came across um, I he still thoroughly enjoyed his time there but he he uh, um, he he definitely had his challenges. At the same time, um, uh, uh, I think that we had similar missions in many ways. He was he was in charge of much of the church's growth and media at the time. And when I worked for the church, I I I kind of saw myself with a very similar mission that uh, that uh, um, uh, getting that word out to the masses was was an important task for me at the time. Yeah. Just two quick things. My just a coincidence. My stepfather, who's been married to my mom for over thirty years, Donald McCulloch, was an Air Force Colonel, uh, and he was he was over the BYU Air ROTC. Oh, okay. I bet they after, knew each other after your grandpa. So I'm, uh -huh. I'm betting they knew each other. Yeah. Um, and then also, you, you mentioned in your notes that he was the voice of. Elohim in the temple. Oh Ireland, yes, right? yeah. So he was the voice of Elohim. Uh, that that used to be a, it, when <clears throat> when I was working on my own personal name SEO because I, I do my own stuff as well here and there. I uh, that was a thorn in my side for when I was when I was when I was Mormon. <laughs> uh, was was the ex Mormon sites that would point out the the the. the people behind the different characters in the temple and my grandfather was listed there he's in IMDB as is uh as the the voice of uh Elohim in there and uh, it's uh, <laughs> I did uh, not know that voices in the temple ceremony were in IMDB <laughs> yeah if anyone has a copy of that film I want it for my personal collection just because I've never guy. seen it I think I know a guy <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't even get that while working for the church. <laughs> um, cool. So uh, 
uh, and you write in your notes that you also had some other grand grandparents or yeah um, people who who worked in various church callings. So you, yeah, you just so I've, I've it got, sounds like a really deep. I've got a very extended Mormon family, yeah. very deep uh, Mormon family. I have a lot of family that aren't Mormon too. Yeah. So I, I've got a really good mix in my family, but at the same time, it's it's deep, deep Mormon roots yeah. within my family. Like a lot of us. Um, yeah. <laughs> so so um, talk, before we jump into kind of uh, how things started to shift for you, um, maybe talk about just briefly, you know, did you have a good experience growing up in the church? Did you ever have a traditional testimony? Were you ever a true believer? And if you want to set the stage for uh, the positive aspects of your church affiliation, sure. uh, just so people, uh, you know, don't want to assume that you never had a testimony yeah. or you were just offended or or took, took the church lightly. Talk about whatever you want to about Certainly. your uh, yeah. experiences with the church before. So I, I mean, um, I I I was I was born into a devout Mormon family, as you, as, as as you're aware. I uh, my entire life I I uh, I was deacons quorum president, teachers quorum president, priest quorum uh, first assistant. Uh, um, uh, very involved in in Boy Scouts within the church growing up. Um, I was clerks and bishoprics. Got your eagle. eagle. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm an at eagle. What age? And uh, at age, I actually, I, 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 I had everything about the project up until I almost 18. Slacker. Right before 18, Slacker. I, I okay, got my project done. You just went down a tiny bit. I know, bit I know. In the I, credibility I, uh, But I've been a scoutmaster since. I'll, <laughs> I'll tell that in a second. But I, um, I, I, I the, uh, um. But uh, I've been clerks and in wards. I served a mission in Thailand. Um, uh, my mission president was Michael Goodman, who's uh, over the uh, um, uh, some of the uh, he does uh, um, talks on doubt and such for BYU uh, at the moment. And he's 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 known for a recent uh, BYU devotional he did on that. Um, very smart man. I, I actually really look up to him. I think he's a smart guy, genuine decent guy that I, um, I think is, is really, uh, um, I still look up to him. I think he's, he's a, a good man. Um, the, uh, uh, smart too. Um, <laughs> I said that, um, the, uh, uh, on my mission, I was in branch presidencies. Uh, I, uh, um, I've, I've had just about any calling except maybe Bishop or, <laughs> or, or anything about that. Uh, um, I have been, I was, um, I was, I, uh, Terrell Givens was my bishop uh, for a while. Um, uh, I was his Sunday school president. Fiona was my uh, was my do gospel doctrine teacher. It was an amazing word. Uh, um, uh, and talk about leadership roulette. That was that was a good one. Um, I wasn't really doubting at that point, though. Um, there, there, I, 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 in fact, I had no clue the caliber of what the Givens knew when I worked there um, the uh, when I worked when I when I was in their ward um, I uh, um, I was actually in um, uh, Guy is it John Guy uh, John Guy's ward uh, he when he became bishop at, at uh, in Provo he uh, um, I was in his ward he's uh, for those that don't know he's over um, uh, the the papyrus and Abrahamic uh, Egyptian studies uh, um, at uh, at the time it was farms. Um, uh, I've Noel Reynolds, who was over farms, was my stake president before my mission. Um, uh, I, I've Over, I've, overall, I've, how would you how would you describe kind of before working for the church, kind of what the church meant to you and how you felt about it? It was and, and what your testimony was rooted in. So, so to me. Um, I really was a strong believer up until probably a year or two into my marriage. Uh, I, in fact, I was even still, I consider myself a strong believer after that, but I, I was a strong believer. Long story short, I was a, a really strong believer before I worked for the church. I had one period of doubt before I worked for the church where I, uh, I started to question a little bit about um, the, tr the transition from Joseph Smith to Brigham Young. Uh, and whether Brigham Young, I, I started to realize not only do I have to have a testimony of Joseph Smith, 
but because of all the different transitions within Mormonism uh, at, after Joseph Smith died, I've got to figure out, is Brigham Young a, a prophet uh, at that time? And I went through a really, uh, a little bit of a tough struggle around that um, for a brief time before I worked for the church. But beyond that, and I, I got over that, uh, um, uh, was, uh, came up with my own reasoning that uh, mostly based on spiritual experiences and such that, uh, that uh, were the uh, reason I stayed. I had many spiritual experiences in the church. Um, we can talk about those more if you want, but, uh, um, uh, but, uh, uh, but yeah, before working for the church, I was, I was very much a believer. And just the church meant what to you? It meant, um, it was, I, it, I believed it was God's true church on earth. I believe that, uh, it was, uh, a, uh, um, that it was that I had to believe in order to get into heaven, um, and to get in order to live live with God, I had to be righteous and live the commandments. Um, um, I believe that uh, um, I I I believe that uh, um, I I had to be a a firm temple recommend holder, attend the temple regularly. Um, that uh, that uh, fulfilled my calling. Um, I was diligent uh, up until the end. I was very diligent in every single calling I had, and uh, um, I, it it really. I mean, it was the world to me. I I didn't know much else. That was everything. That was everything I ever knew. Would you say you loved it? I absolutely loved it. Yep. Okay. Um, well, so what changed, <laughs> and when? <laughs> when did things start to change for you? So, um, so I'd, I'd say the, the little incident of, of Brigham Young and figuring out the transition from Joseph Smith to Brigham Young really started some of the questioning process for me. I, um, that actually centered around, um, I was, uh, um, uh, some of my career, I started out as a software developer and ended up in digital marketing. Uh, and uh, back in my software development days, um, I, I was, uh, I built a few Facebook apps, and one of those um, was a religious Facebook app that I built. Uh, it was called, um, I think I called it the uh, um, I'm a Mormon app, or We're Mormon, or something like that. Uh, this was before the I'm a Mormon campaign. <laughs> uh, and, uh, uh, and it was just a little app you could put on your Facebook profile and share that you're a Mormon and who you are, and, and pick your favorite scripture and, and display that. Um, and I uh, actually sold that. Uh, um, I, I don't think I'm allowed to disclose who I sold it to, but uh, um, uh, but uh, I sold that and uh, um, and ended up uh, making. But I retained the rights to to the code, so I could make it for other religions. And I actually made a bunch for Protestants. I made one for Baptists and one for Catholics. And as I was studying about the beliefs of these individual religions, um, I started to uh, come across all sorts of negative, um, not necessarily negative, but just historical information. I, I, I hate saying negative when it comes to history because it's history. Um, it was historical information about the church, uh, uh, things about Joseph Smith, things in particular about the trans Transition from Joseph Smith to um, uh, to Brigham Young and to uh, 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 Strang to uh, um, to Joseph Smith's son and uh, and uh, uh, and starting to realize that I had to come up with my own testimony and that kind of started some of the questioning and that kind of always retained in my mind. I came up with a conclusion on that in the end um, and when I. I, and, and what ended up happening is, is that stuck around. I took a job with the church, long story short. Um, your brother actually convinced me to work for the church. <laughs> What's his name? I don't know if I'm allowed. No, Joel's <laughs> his name, Joel, Joel Dillon. I, I, um, and uh, uh, Joel uh, convinced me. Was he, was he persuasive? Was he charming and charismatic? He was and highly intelligent and handsome? I, he, was, he was highly intelligent. Was he tall? He, 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 he was a little tall. <laughs> a little tall? <laughs> Looked a little bit like not, you. Not a lot tall? <laughs> I, I think you're taller. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Uh, I like that. Um, Keep going. <laughs> uh, but uh, um, ended up uh, being convinced to take a job. I actually was on my own working uh, um, 
uh, I, I was both consulting for other companies and I had a website I ran called social2.com that uh, we built tools for companies to uh, uh, manage their Twitter presence basically. And uh, um, I basically gave all that up um, to what I, was thought, what I thought was originally gonna be a six month stint at the church, took, took the job at the church and told myself I was going to be there until the momentum was uh, was gone and and what or what's, what until the momentum was going uh, for social media in the church ended up there for um, a total of three years and uh, and as I was there I came across multiple experiences that really started to tear away my testimony of the current modern day church again bringing me back to the is Brigham Young's church the right church or not and long story short that's that's uh, that's what really starts some of the questioning um, after I worked for the church Wait, just one sec I just uh, some people may not know so my older brother Joel uh, worked for Microsoft for many years and uh, after he did super well there the church recruited him to to be there eventually their chief information officer so my brother Joel during a lot, most of the time Mormon Stories was around, he was the head of IT for the church, uh, general manager and over the church's software, computers, satellites, communications, all that stuff. Uh, that, that was Joel's role and he loved, he loved working there and from everything I've heard, people really loved the job he did. So. He, was, he was basically the CIO for the church. Uh, Chief information officer. Chief information yeah. officer, yeah. yeah. Um, I, and uh, and he did a great job. He was good. I, I loved I loved having Joel as a as a boss there. Um, I, the um, I I'll save some of the details of uh, while I work for the church uh, uh, for for later. Uh, but uh, um, long story short, by the time I ended working for the church, I had a different testimony than I started working for the church. I actually still believed when I stopped working for the church, um, but it was more based on at that point. Okay, I've had all these spiritual experiences that I've got to reconcile. Um, I, as a result, and I felt the spirit. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, so so the church has to still be true in some way. The priesthood's still there. Um, uh, the church is still 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 uh, is still God's church. It's just led by very imperfect leaders, even currently. Um, and and I kind of maintained that for a little while, um, uh, and uh, just within the last maybe two years, it's, uh, multiple experiences ended up happening um, uh, that really pushed me over the edge and made me really have to even challenge that. And uh, um, number one was uh, uh, was my uh, uh, was my dad. Um, um, uh, my my dad ended up um, uh, divorcing my mom, and uh, and uh, um, uh, and I still don't know to to this day as to why, and probably doesn't matter. But uh, um, I, and that really hit really hard to me. Uh, it was it was a, it was just tough to go through, even as an adult. Uh, that, that that they were uh, uh, that they went to the divorce, um, and. And what really started to affect my testimony was, uh, was that number one, he was able to leave my mom. Uh, the, uh, and uh, I, again, I don't know his side of the story, so I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna talk too badly about him here. But uh, he was able to 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 leave my mom, uh, in and and they never. And, and he was never forced to his his church membership was never challenged his uh, um, he he was never disciplined for for any of that and there are people that get divorced all over so I, I kind of I, I was willing to kind of forgive that and it's it, divorce is extremely common in the church and people have varying reasons I still don't know my dad's exact reason for why he left so so I was willing to get that but then he this this year he got remarried in the temple. Um, to his new wife, and he never revoked the ceiling with my mom. In essence, and, and, and I don't even have a huge problem with that anymore at this point, other than, in essence, he's practicing polygamy, and the church is unwilling to admit the fact that they practice polygamy. 
uh, you push them on it, they'll say, oh, we, 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 we never denied that, uh, uh, that we practice polygamy, uh, uh, but they're not openly preaching it. It's this thing that they embrace as members, but they're unwilling to embrace it as an organization if that's what they believe in. So, um, uh, so that really hit me hard uh, earlier this year, and I really, it really started to shake my foundation as to, um, is this really the church I want to be in? Um, and I started to really start to question at that point. Because you felt like the church wasn't being honest? Because they weren't being honest. Um, because, and, and, and then other things started to come out uh, to me that I, I realized that if the church isn't being honest, I need to be honest with myself in, in, in every place I can. So I started to, to, again, go back into my roots of the things that I did know about the church and realize there's so many examples of this beyond just polygamy that, uh, they, that are reiterated over and over and over again in the church. And, and, uh, um, and then uh, November 8th happened, or 8th, November 8th that uh, happened uh, uh, with the policy on gays. Um, that didn't 100% uh, shake my testimony, but it, it hurt it. Um, and uh, um, and uh, uh, that, uh, um, adding that, um, adding, um, uh, adding, what, adding did, what didn't you like about that? Uh, the, uh, uh, the November 8th policy, uh, it, it, it's, uh, I have friends, um, good friends who are gay. Um, some of them were married before, uh, um, uh, before they were willing to admit they were gay and, uh, and have since divorced. And these friends can't, their kids, uh, their kids will never be able to be baptized, and I think they would like to see that. At the same time, and this isn't the case for everyone, but but uh, but but uh, um, I have other friends that want to remain Mormon. Um, they want to be active in the church, but they want to remain gay. They don't want to deny the fact that they're gay, uh, and they're willing to forgo some of their own membership for that in order to be themselves and be who they are. And their kids can't get baptized. They will never have the full privileges. And it, it just reiterated to me that that gays will never, at least in the foreseeable future, have the full privileges that heterosexual uh, individuals in the church will have uh, until something changes significantly. And and that hits uh, pretty hard as well. I, uh, I but I, I and, and 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 it was really my my parents. My dad's resealing that really got me thinking about these things. And really, I mean, it took me to a a deep point where I really started to be a little bit more honest with myself on these things, and I started to realize that um, that I was moving faster than the church was on a lot of things. And by being a member of the church, I was being held back from my own progression in these. I wanted to support my gay brothers and sisters. I wanted to. Um, I wanted to love them. I wanted to talk about my feelings about that on social media. I wanted to talk about uh, how to treat my fellow man more as Jesus Christ wants me to treat them uh, and talk about that freely. Uh, I have an audience of lots of people uh, and, and, and I, like, I like showing love to these people and, and, and I couldn't do that as a member of the church. And, and when I realized that, I started to realize I need to start making some decisions here and get to a point where I can increase my progression. And this entire time, I feel like whatever the spirit is, um, it guided me to this point. I felt the same feelings as I was making these decisions as I did when I was working for the church, when I had intense spiritual experiences. And, uh, and I, I've come up with some explanations for that that we can talk about. But, uh, um, uh, but, uh, but. Um, but basically, whatever the spirit is, uh, ended up leading me to the point. I feel more enlightened. I feel but stronger. Before you, before you jump to that, um, was was you've written about uh, how this November policy kind of struck your family even more directly and personally. Sure. Do you, do you want yeah. To talk about that really quick. So so um, <clears throat> so a, a close family member uh, ended up uh, uh, attempting suicide uh, twice this year and. Uh, and uh, for um, uh, twice for what, why why did they attempt? Um, 
I, there was there were some um, there was there was some homosexuality related uh, related to some of it. Uh, um, I won't get into too much no. detail on it, but, uh, but I just wanted um, to tie it to the November thing. Yeah, and uh, um, I, but uh, but uh, so so there's a personal level to some of it. Okay, okay. All right. So um, so maybe maybe talk about uh, what happened once the November policy and the suicide attempts. Uh, started making you feel more passionately like you wanted to open up. How was that received um, sure. with your local leadership? So, um, so I, started to, I started to become a little more liberal online, started sharing a little bit more of my, my real feelings online. Um, I, was, I didn't feel I was really posting anything apostate per se. In fact, I still had a little bit of belief left uh, at that point. I, um, um, but I ended up, I shared, um, um, I shared a post on Facebook about uh, um, uh, it was the Rolling Stone article with Tyler Glenn's uh, video trash uh, in it, and I, I the only thing I commented was something to the effect of of uh, um, I see a man who's hurting or something to that effect in in the post, uh, and that was all I said on it with a share to the Rolling Stone article, and uh, I mean there were all sorts of comments in in there on different levels. Um, uh, uh, but but the post itself was to me very innocent um, and both supportive I thought of Tyler but at the same time um, not apostate in my opinion um, I get a call from uh, um, within a few weeks after that I uh, get a call from um, our executive secretary um, asking me to um, that the to come meet with the bishop um, and and I pushed. And I asked why, and and he wouldn't tell me. And the bishop ends up calling me and saying that, that the state president has asked to to meet with uh, with him and me. And I'm thinking, okay, well, is this a calling? Is it am I uh, am I going to be bishop, <laughs> or <laughs> what's going on here? And uh, um, I, uh, and he wouldn't tell me what it was. And I said, well, is it worthiness related? He's like, no. I said, is it calling? He's like, no. And I'm like, okay, something's going on here. <laughs> And uh, um, and uh, so I agreed, and uh, and ended up going in and uh, meeting with them. And um, they beat around the bush a little bit. They started. He started this whole process of asking me uh, um, how my mission was. Uh, what do I think about the twelve and uh, and the and the uh, the leaders of the church and. Uh, um, and and I gave him some some very generic answers to each of those, and because um, I wasn't 100 percent sure on those. In fact, I was going into the meeting thinking I was actually going to start talking to the bishop about my beliefs in the church, um, and they um, and they jumped to. He starts saying a couple members, um, uh, a, a, a couple people have been sharing, um, uh, sharing your posts uh, on on Facebook with us, uh, or, or he even took a, started broader with that. He's saying there's some issues we're really worried about. I'm, I've, I've, I, he starts blaming on the spirit. He starts saying, the spirit has prompted me to think that, uh, that, uh, that, that something's going on with you <laughs> and, uh, and that there's something wrong going on in your life or something like that. Um, uh, and, and I said, okay, well, well, what? And and uh, he's like he's he's like, is everything okay? I'm like, yeah, everything's fine. And and it, and I say, so so there's something that specifically that you're. I, I pushed him. And I said, there's something specifically that you're going to uh, that you're trying to get to on, on this. What is it? And he ends up coming down and saying, there are some members of our uh, some members have <laughs> have uh, been sharing your your posts on Facebook uh, with me uh, and the bishop and uh, and uh, and we're a little bit concerned about that. And I actually knew that the, the bishop had told my wife this uh, uh, earlier, but uh, um, I, I, so I kind of knew some of this was happening, but uh, I didn't know they were also sending to my state president. And the state president starts blaming me, and I, I push him, and I say, what post? And, and, and he says, well, it doesn't matter. There, there's some posts. I'm like, what post? And he says, well, in particular, there's this one about Tyler Glenn that, uh, <laughs> that, uh, uh, that you posted. And I was like, okay, well, let's pull that up and, and look at it. <laughs> and, and, and I show him the post, and he actually hadn't even seen the post. Uh, I, uh, it was just people talking about it. Uh, um, uh, but he had, 
arranged this entire meeting because people were gossiping about me and my family uh, uh, to uh, 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 to probably not just the bishop and stake president, probably the rest of the ward and stake as well. Um, he wouldn't say who it, who it was. Uh, he wasn't condemning any of the, the gossiping or or uh, such. It was just to condemn me. Long story short, um, we uh, my, I, I ended up um, walking out of that meeting. Uh, I, 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 he he um, he he insisted um, that I admit. That the post was uh, that the post was apostate, and that it was apostate for me to share something like that, and I refused to do it. And and he told me uh, he told me that I couldn't go to the temple if I was unwilling to do that. And I walked out after that, and uh, I actually never stepped foot in church again after that. And that was that was the nail in the coffin for me. I had already been doubting. I was. I was actually intending to go to that meeting, talking to the bishop about my my uh, my belief changes. Um, uh, I had just been released as scoutmaster, and uh, in the young men's presidency, I found it was perfect time to start talking about those things with the bishop. And, um, it, and you know, it, people can assume, but uh, now that you've had time to reflect on that experience, what exactly was? Uh, that you either think or feel was wrong or inappropriate about how your bishop and stake president uh, dealt with this matter with you? Um, for number one, um, <clears throat> they went at it. They were judgmental. They were they were going at it. They were abusing. Uh, what's the scripture in Doctrine and Covenants about? Uh, unrighteous dominion. Unrighteous dominion. Yeah, domin yeah. Uh, they were ex exercising unrighteous dominion. They were coming into it, um, ignoring. Um, uh, what Jesus would have done in telling those who are without sin to cast the first stone, and instead coming at me accusatory, judgmental, um, wanting to condemn me. Was it false um, pretenses? Uh, Wouldn't they say it wasn't worthiness? I, there was false pretenses. In fact, I caught the stake president in lies uh, multiple times, uh, 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 and the bishop uh, it still to this day insists that he didn't say it was a worthiness uh, interview because <laughs> uh, it was. Because <laughs> uh, apostasy is, is a matter he, of When he brings up the temple at the end, that I can't go to the temple <laughs> at the end, that's worthiness. Uh, um, uh, and uh, I, I, they came to condemn, uh, which is not how uh, Doctrine and Covenant says you're supposed to use your priesthood. Uh, and I felt, I felt like Jesus Christ did. I, I don't mean to come up with a Christ complex in this in any way, but I felt in many ways like Jesus Christ did uh, when he was condemned by his people. I, I, I felt uh, accused, condemned. I felt like a bunch of, uh, a, a bunch of uh, Pharisees had just uh, sacrificed me uh, and, uh, and hung me up on a cross. And... Uh, um, and which was exactly what we're taught. We were taught in church not to do, and uh, and 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 that hurt. That hurt a lot. Um, I, and I don't want to say I was offended, um, and that wasn't the entire reason I left. Uh, that was that was the nail in the coffin for me. But uh, uh, I I I like to share. I, I offended others, <laughs> and uh, when I when when it became too difficult for me to stay in the church, when it, when it became more difficult for me to stay in the church than to leave, that's when it became really easy to just leave. Sounds like you're saying you're telling your story and speaking your truth offended them. Absolutely. And so they removed you. Yep, and the members who were sharing those posts with them. So uh, you never set foot in the church again and how did that how's that played out to now yeah so um i i, I actually um i actually shortly before that i actually baptized my my child <laughs> I, and uh, i was i was very questioning the church at that point I, I was on my way out at that point but uh um but that was kind of my last my last thing, a big thing in the church, but as as uh, uh, but but after that meeting, I never set foot back in the church. Um, uh, I I actually started. I I never really, like I said, I'm not I'm not the best at church history. I'm good at church presence, <laughs> and uh, uh, I started to study more of the church history. Um, I knew a lot of uh, 
uh, the transition from Joseph Smith to Brigham Young and to Strang and um, and uh, uh, Joseph Smith uh, Jr. and and such. Uh, um, but uh, I mean, jo Joseph Smith the third. Is that who it was? Yeah. Um, and. Uh, um, uh, but I didn't know a lot about Joseph Smith himself and, and the multiple stories around that, other than maybe the church essays and, and such. And uh, um, I, and I started, I started reading um, No Man Knows My History by Fon Brody. I had read, I had, I had already read Rustone Rolling before that. Um, uh, everyone who reads Rustone Rolling has to read No Man Knows My History to get the entire picture. There's, 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 she's, she wasn't the absolute best historian in terms of uh, historians going that, sh that she does leave her opinions in in certain places, but she has case after case of citation in there that you can go and you can look these things up. And I go in and I look up the citations and find the original sources. And, uh, and that's been a really eye-opening thing for me in terms of understanding who Joseph Smith was. Um, I have my own theories around that. I, in the end, I don't think anyone can actually prove one way or the other whether Joseph Smith actually did these things or not. I think, personally, I've come up with more evidences against Joseph Smith than for him. I had, used to have a lot of evidences for him. I've come up with even more evidences against him, and, uh, uh, and faith is based on evidence. Um, uh, so, so uh, Some would say it's based on the spirit or feeling. Yeah, and, and that's not what the scriptures say. <laughs> the scriptures say faith, faith is uh, evidence of things not seen which are true. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, and the spirit maybe confirms truth, but you have to go off of evidences to, to pull up um, the things and to figure out what's true and what's not. And frankly, the spirit has confirmed whatever this, again, it's whatever that spirit is, has confirmed to me that, uh, that the, those evidences are, are I, I just, I, I'm without a doubt, I, I can't say Joseph Smith is a prophet anymore. I can't say that he was, uh, um, that, that uh, I, in fact, I, I'd say he was my my own theories, and these I don't know for sure. My own theories are that he was a fraud. That uh, he was, um, uh, um, at least at the beginning, he was. Um, I think he really got into it towards the end, and perhaps even convinced himself that he was a prophet towards the end. But, uh, um, uh, but, but uh, he's an amazing. Um, I, I, he basically invented the matrix. <laughs> he invented this whole system where people are in this cave where they don't realize reality from what's actually real, and uh, uh, and and you see that when you leave the church, you really see uh, the entire picture, and, and that's 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 what I've gotten most out of this is um, uh, it Plato. You hear about Plato's cave, and that uh, people are seeing shadows on the wall. Um, I feel like when I was Mormon, I was seeing shadows on the wall, and now I can see the cave, and I can really see from the outside looking in where things stand and where they were, and uh, in, and uh, in many ways, it's like the Matrix. You're, you're living in the Matrix when you when you're in the church, you don't realize it. <laughs> so you took the red pill. I took the red pill, and <laughs> and I've I've been happier since. Yeah. So, uh, do you want to talk about kind of your membership in the church today, or how that story has? Yeah, ended? sure. So, uh, um, I, I I don't share this too far and wide, but I guess I'll I'll share it here. I, I on Independence Day, um, uh, I I submitted my resignation papers, um, uh, uh, and uh, it's really easy nowadays. In fact, I learned this when I worked for the church. <laughs> you go to quitmormon.com, fill out your information, uh, give them minimum your birth date, and uh, if you have your membership ID, you can give that too. And uh, and they uh, and and a, a nice friendly lawyer uh, uh, makes some nice. Uh, uh, legal looking papers and sends it to the church and takes takes your name off the the records and uh, with within the month I was my records were were removed and uh, I felt I needed to do that in order to be absolute I, I wanted people to know for sure that, that this isn't just I, I've had people ask uh, well is this a, a phase is this something are you gonna come back I've, I've made my decision this is this is where I'm at and I'm not changing there's I, I'm happier where I'm at there's there's absolutely unless the church were willing to at this point unless the church were willing to allow me to 
practice a faith where I don't believe in God, I don't believe in, 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 in Jesus Christ. Um, actually, God, God's a whole different story. I, I have my own perception on God. I'll, I'll share that in a second. But, uh, um, I, but uh, I don't, if I'm able to not believe in Jesus Christ, not believe in Joseph Smith, not believe in the, the um, uh, historicity of, of uh, or uh, the historicity of Book of Mormon or the Bible, uh, then maybe I'll, maybe I'll join again. <laughs> Uh, but I'm happy where I'm at. I've I've seen um, I, I, my my testimony is now based on real evidence, real science, real truth. Um, I've seen real truth versus faith-based truth now, and and I can't change that. That's uh, whether I wanted to or not. I couldn't change it. You talk about uh, feeling the spirit before and having your testimony based on the spirit. Then you talk about mm-hmm. whatever that spirit was leading you out. <laughs> how do you how do you make sense of what the spirit was sure. and is now? So there's a lot of things I still can't explain 100%. Um, uh, what really ended up making me okay with with all of this was studying um, the the fact that um, you start with just the other sects of Mormonism. Um, just go into from anywhere from the fundamentalist Mormons to Community of Christ to any of the other uh, sects that are out there. They also believe that the tr- that their church is the only true church. That their church is is led by a prophet. That uh, with maybe exception of Community of Christ, uh, to an extent even them, um, and. Uh, uh, or that, uh, um, and, and they believe in praying and getting an answer to to uh, prayer through the Spirit, uh, and and they do that and they get these answers through the Spirit, saying that their church is the true church. Um, you can take that outside of Mormonism, though. Um, Christian faiths do this. Muslims do this. Um, uh, Catholics do it. Uh, um, uh, where where. You can talk to Christian after Christian. There's story after story, even outside of Christianity, outside of uh, uh, where where people have these spiritual experiences, confirming what they're doing, confirming the things that they're doing is is the right things. So whatever that is, I can't 100% explain, but it's not limited to the LDS Church. And if it leads you out of the LDS Church, you need to follow it uh, because it's con- it's a constant across everything, and uh, and I can't really. I mean, for, I I tend to lean a little scientific on things, and I mean, it could be anywhere from uh, uh, some sort of um, uh, uh, quantum. Uh, experience that some other universe is inspiring what we're we're doing here that's that's far out there to uh, uh, the, the the far out matrix theories of, of something beyond our reality and our existence guiding us in different things to even um, uh, just uh, I, I I mean if there is a God uh, which which I'm I'm, I, have, I, have, I have a definition of God. I'll, again, I'll tell you in a second. Yeah, push me on that. Um, uh, but uh, if, there, if there is a God, um, it could just be that God doesn't care what religion you're in. He cares that, that you're affecting the world in a positive way. And, uh, and, and God will guide you in that direction in some way. So, so that it could be that as well. Um, but uh, I, I don't know exactly what it is. I know it's never failed me. And, and if it leads you out of the church, you need to follow it. Has it been hard uh, to leave the church uh, for those who who think it's just a choice, that it's a trivial matter, that it's just like a desire to sin or to be offended or or the easy way out? Um, what have you learned uh, from going through it that you would want to share to an open-minded believer about uh, what it's like to go through what you've been through? Yeah, so, yeah, this is... I... It's been one of the the toughest. I mean, I, I mentioned I'm happier. I'm 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 in a better place than I ever was. But the process of getting there and the side effects um, of it all have been one of the toughest experiences I've ever gone through. The church is all I've ever known. Um, I, I've mentioned my history. Um, it's all my ancestors have known uh, uh, you don't go as, as many generations as is 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 i go <laughs> it, it, I mean, my, my my history goes back as far as the church goes uh, in terms of uh, generations of mormonism is is what i'm saying um uh, the um i 
I, I knew nothing else other than Mormonism. I, I, um, I was married into the church. I was, uh, I was married and, and sealed in the temple. Um, I, I, I it, it's uh, my my entire life around me. My my extended family are all Mormon, so to to realize that all of that isn't true, um, to come to a real, realization yourself. And not everyone will believe this. I mean, if 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 you're Mormon and you're hearing this, it doesn't make sense to you entirely. Um, so some people may kind of get it, but uh, um, I if if I uh, but. You come to a point where I, I, I have to admit what I believe, and I, I, in all the evidences I've seen, I have no other way of believing other than it's not true. And I want to deny it. I want, I, 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 and sometimes I do want to deny it. I want to go back to that old life where I, I'm okay just being pretty and, uh, and being, being able to deny what I, what I know and, uh, and having that culture back. But, but you can't. So I mean, that entire culture is stripped from you, um, and that is hard. Um, that's really hard to do. And uh, um, I've had at least one person uh, say they won't send me business uh, because uh, because I left the church. Um, um, I've uh, I've actually had my family has been wonderful to me. My extended family, um, my immediate family, uh, 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 the um, my mom and dad. Um, uh, were uh, my dad hasn't spoken to me about it, so I don't know about my dad. But uh, um, my mom has been uh, very, uh, um, uh, very accepting. She has several brothers and sisters that have left the church as well, so she's she's been through this. But uh, um, uh, my other extended family have, have been fairly accepting, and, and but that's not the case for everyone. Um, for a lot of others, um, they're completely outcast from the church. I have a friend, um, a really good friend, uh, that uh, is, is uh, left the church when he was a teenager, and his he was he was forced to leave his home. Uh, in fact, the, there are lots of homeless youth out there, especially in the LGBT community at the moment, that uh, um, are forced to leave their homes because they choose not to believe, and uh, um, and the culture pushes that. So, uh, you have the potential of losing everything, and it's a it's a scary experience to go through as a result. I think I answered your question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, so so to conclude this episode, you've been through some wonderful experiences with the church and and then it kind of all unraveled and it sounds like it was excruciating so for people who are listening believers non-believers how would you want to kind of summarize this this part of the podcast so i i, I mean i i i kind of want to relate it in some ways to the u.s election at the moment <laughs> You gotta listen. <laughs> what, no matter what side you're on, <laughs> you've gotta listen to the other side, because there's always a story on the other side that uh, that hasn't been told and that isn't being told, and that, that you're not fully understanding. And frankly, you're never gonna fully understand that other person's story unless you've walked in their shoes. Um, and 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 you, I, I, what really pushed me out there and really started making me able to accept more people. Uh, in, in their beliefs was being able to step outside of myself uh, and look at it from the outside, throw all my beliefs, everything else aside. At some point, times it means being able to pretend like you don't believe in God even at times. And, and then think about it from that perspective, what, uh, uh, what is this person like? And why, what are they going through? Why are they acting the way they are? I'm going through a stage of grief right now. I'm going through the stages of grief right now. At the moment, I'm somewhat in the anger phase. I'm trying not to, <laughs> but I'm somewhat in the anger phase. If you see me angry online, there's a reason for that. And I'm going through my own stages of grief at the moment. Other people do the same thing. Try to understand. That's, that's the main thing I would, I would offer to, to anyone who sees an ex-Mormon going through this or someone who, having left the church. And for the ex-Mormons, same thing for, for the Mormon friends. Um, try to remember when you were in their shoes. And if, uh, if there's someone out there who, for whom the church isn't working, if, if they're suffering, if, if there's an LGBT youth or adult uh, that's suffering or potentially even suicidal, but they're 
but they're really terrified to uh, to find a safe place. Um, any any perspective you'd want to even share? <laughs> um, yeah, uh, you're not alone. <laughs> um, know there are people out there that love you and support you. Um, I, I, frankly, both in the church and out of the church, there are people that support you and love you. You've got to find those people. Um, there are groups on Facebook. There are groups online. Um, uh, find someone out there. Uh, find a confidant. Um, reach out to friends you trust most. Um, reach out to... Uh, uh, contact me. <laughs> I'll introduce you to some people. Uh, contact John. Uh, um, uh, we're all trustworthy people. Um, I, I'm sure in the comments of this and, and such, there will be others that are willing to also reach out uh, and, and th that are trustworthy. Um, reach out to one of us. We've been there. We know, we, we know what you're going through, and, and we want to help you. It doesn't mean you have to leave the church if you don't want to. It doesn't mean, uh, it, it, it could mean that if you want to leave the church, we can help you uh, through that process. But, but please, you're not alone. Reach out, please. All right, um, Jesse Stay. Jesse Stay the third? Second. Jesse Stay the second? My son is the third. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for, for joining us for part one of your story. I found it, I, I've, I've heard a lot of these stories, uh, <laughs> and I found this to be very insightful and moving, and I'm really grateful. So thank, thank you, you for this. My pleasure. Stay, you know, feel free to go up to mormonstories.org and share your constructive thoughts or feedback uh, with with Jesse, uh, I'm sure he'd love to participate. Uh, feel free to tweet or Facebook uh, your thoughts or perspectives as well. Keep them constructive. Um, and uh, don't forget to join us for part two because in the very next episode, in about three minutes, uh, <laughs> we're gonna be talking about Jesse's uh, experience working for the LDS Church for three years, leading up uh, much of their social media initiatives, including Facebook, Twitter, uh, the I'm Mormon campaign and all that stuff. So stay tuned. See you on the flip side. Thank you. I appreciate it, John. All right.